what they know.com is our site, which um, basically is a, a, an easy way to make freedom of information on requests online. And if it is a public archive of requests, which is really useful for finding out what other people have been asking for and how things change over time. So um, the way it works, uh, we list uh, like, what was it, 40 odd thousand or nearly 40,000 authorities, but obviously you're mostly probably interested in Cardiff Council and maybe some other Cardiff related authorities. Uh, so you can kind of go and look at all the requests that have been made. Um, I note there's a Cardiff Civic Society one there on the top page, which I was very pleased to see. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also follow um, public bodies. So you can actually, um, you know, keep track on what other people are asking, what responses are coming back. Um, and similarly, you can follow like any search term or any other user. So like I, I follow Cardiff Civic Society just to see what they're asking about because I'm quite interested. Um, so, you know, it's a good way of like just getting a feel for the information that is being asked for. We also have uh, what do they know pro, which is basically um, uh, like an added toolkit built into what do they know for like journalists, campaigners, researchers, which makes it easy to keep on top of like quite complex FOI investigations. Um, basically, it allows people to make requests in private for a certain period of time, more geared towards the journalists but it also helps manage like big um, batch requests to like all councils in the UK, that kind of thing. Uh, so it gives you some like nicer dashboards and stuff. So making an FY request. Um, you can basically request information from any public authority or publicly funded body in the UK under the FOI Act. So obviously government departments um, or like committees, local councils, but also like schools, colleges, universities who often own buildings. So, you know, that is something like a connection to make there. It's not just councils who own these things. And many of the, these bodies are actually um, publicly owned or and subject to FOI. Like even GPs, dentists, pharmacists, opticians come under FOI for certain functions. Um, so, and also actually worth noting, I, I don't know if this applies in Wales actually off the top of my head, but fairly recently um, social landlords have come become subject to FOI in Scotland. So, you know, that is definitely a, a campaign worth fighting for to get that um, to also be true in Wales. Um, I'm not entirely sure on the legislation there, but um, worth knowing about. So you can request any kind of recorded information using FOI. So like what you can't do is um, say, or like ask a question of like, please explain to me, you know, why you made this decision. You've actually got to ask for things that have been recorded. Things like meeting minutes, database tables, reports, internal correspondence, um, that kind of thing. So it can be a bit of a slog to figure out the right things to ask for. But, um, you know, once you figure out like the, the, the correct names for things, uh, like, you know, if uh, the council are running like a regeneration project, say, you know, it's worth like figuring out what those are in order to ask for like all correspondence related to that or correspondence in relating to meetings um, or project plans, that kind of thing. Um, there's also, um, a very similar legislation called the Environmental, Regu Environmental Information Regulations. Um, basically much the same as FOI, but um, this some, sometimes if you can't get information through FOI, you might be able to get it through EIR. Um, and that might be relevant to some of your stuff, you know, in terms of like, the environmental impact of like redevelopments or new construction, that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, if, if like um, someone wants to go knock down some old building for a parking garage, you know, like they, you might be able to get more information from EIR around like the uh, mass of emissions, which is gonna come out from more cars, you know, arriving at this parking garage. Um, Pretty obvious you can't request personal information or information relating to yourself through uh, freedom of information or what they know. Um, you can get that directly from these authorities under subject access requests. Um, 
we, we do kind of like try to push our users to search for information that's already out there um, before making requests because, you know, e even though bodies have like a duty to be open with citizens, like it does cost the money to like process these requests and is quite time, it can be quite time consuming. So, you know, I think we try to encourage everyone to like be mindful of that and be good citizens about it. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of an overview about like who you can request from and what you can request. Taking you through what do they know, it is pretty easy. You just click make a request on a public body and you get um, a really simple form with uh, like a summary. So, you know, like a, the gist of what you want to ask for and then um, some space for the information you want to ask for. Um, we've we don't actually provide any templates ourselves, but plenty of people do. So this is one from uh, the Ferret in Scotland, who are a kind of community journalist organization. And then there's another one um, from FOI directory, which gives a sense of like how you can ask for this stuff. Again, I'll share all this later. Don't worry about reading it too much now. Um, but it's good. It's good to kind of like have a look at what other people are asking and you can obviously also use what they know itself to look how other people worded requests um, and to see what was successful in getting answers um, so you know you might look through say Bristol Council's page see what people are asking about there and then ask those same requests to Cardiff Council like I've actually done this myself um, use F use what they know as a basis to like figure out how to word my request and then once you've submitted your request, um, it becomes public on what do they know. So, you know, we think that's quite a good incentive for public bodies to uh, answer and not ignore them because everyone in public can see it. Um, and then what do they know kind of gives you email alerts if they become late or, um, or you know, when you get a response, it'll give you an email alert. So, you know, you don't have to like constantly chase them up and it'll give you help along the way as well. And then finally, you should get a response. Um, and usually, um, well, often it can be like an attachment or spreadsheet or whatever. Um, public authorities have 20 working days to respond. Again, what they know helps you through all this. Um, when they become late, uh, we will tell you and uh, give you some like help in following up and like pressuring them to respond. Uh, and then what happens after you make your request while well, they've hopefully responds and give you the information you've asked for. They can also say, we don't have the information, uh, which you know is often the case, but they do have duties to like either um, point you towards an authority who might hold the information or actually transfer the request on your behalf. So this is quite useful to know um, when, you know, like you ask Cardiff Council for something, but it's actually, I don't know, some, sub body that Cardiff Council part run, you know, they actually have a duty to help you find this information. Um, or they can also refuse to give you the information under what are called exemptions in FOI. So basically like reasons why they do have the information but might not want to um, uh, release it. Um, we're actually just on the verge of launching some new uh, functionality which like actually helps you challenge these exemptions better and like understand what they are. So uh, one of them, for example, is, um, is getting the information would cost too much. You know, take like say you ask for all correspondence over a ten year period. You know, it would just take way too much time and effort to um, for them to compile that. So even though they can refuse, they have specific. They they have to tell you why they're refusing. Um, under which exemptions, and there are there are generally like public interest tests, which um, they have to do to like strike a balance between keeping information private or publishing it. Uh, this kind of comes up a lot in like commercial agreements if you ask for contracts. Um, so we're actually building some help to help you actually like make sure they do these tests properly and publish the results, uh, and that'll be launching in probably about a month or so's time. Um, so you will always get the information you ask for through FOI, um, but as I said, if the authority does have the information but won't release it, there's some pretty specific guidance around 
uh, what they have to do in order to withhold the information. Like it's basically published by default unless some specific things exist. Um, FOI directory have a really good guide on exemptions. Um, as I said, we're also working on making it easier to challenge these. Um, and another good resource is uh, the Ferret Story Lab. They actually have a course on freedom of information, which goes into like a lot more depth of like, you know, how to word these requests. Um, so they're a, like a, a community-based uh, journalism group in Scotland, but most of the stuff they have will, is related to um, or applicable to UK law as well. So I would say that's definitely worth this, like thirty pounds it costs um, to like really get a good sense of how they use FOI in their journalism, and like loads of their stories that they brought out use FOI, and they're they're, they're really like good at it. Um, 